1602 episode of What If is far and away one of my least favorite episodes of the season, and part of that's because the original Neil Gaiman written miniseries was amazing. And I don't really have enough time in one of these videos to explain all the ways the episode is a pale, superficial imitation of its source, so I'm gonna just stay focused on the comic. After all, this isn't poorly explained animated anthology series. The year is 1602, obviously. Foul weather, natural disasters, and unexplainable anomalies plague the world. And dinosaurs are roaming around in America, but that might be unrelated? Queen Elizabeth, at the urging of her magician-slash-physician Stephen Strange, tasks her intelligencer Sir Nicholas Fury with securing the safe transport of a powerful treasure of the Templars, safeguarded by an old man named Donald. Fury, in turn, assigns a task to freelance spy Natasha Romanova and blind bard Matthew Murdock. Mutants are labeled witch breed and hunted by Inquisitor Enrique, courting secret alliances with both King James of Scotland and Otto von Doom, the handsome of Latveria, but finds himself opposed by Carlos Javier and his select school for sons of gentlefolk. Virginia Dare, first child of the Roanoke colony and her Native American protector Rojas, sailed to London for an audience with Queen Elizabeth, attended to during their stay by Nicholas Fury's young assistant, Peter Parqua. And then shit gets crazy. Virginia is revealed to be a shapeshifter empowered by a strange anomaly she found in the forests overseas, Queen Elizabeth is assassinated by agents of Otto von Doom, prompting the paranoid, magic-hating, mutant-hating King James to take the throne. Murdoch locates Donald and the treasure, which appears to be a glowing golden orb, but they are betrayed by Natasha and brought to von Doom's castle. Javier and his students are arrested at James's behest, only to escape with fury on a flying ship, and Stephen Strange is visited by none other than Uatu the Watcher, who explains a distressing truth despite his usual vow of non-interference. The world of 1602 is actually the past of the main Marvel Universe, altered by the arrival of a time traveler from the future 15 years prior. This traveler's continued presence destabilized the timeline, prompting superheroes to start emerging hundreds of years early, and if something isn't done, the resulting chaos will not only annihilate their universe, but the entirety of the multiverse. Strange is sworn to secrecy while he lives, but is soon put to death by King James, and thanks to his magics, this grants him an opportunity to explain the problem to those who might be able to fix it. Things come to a head at the home of Otto von Doom, who is not only facing an attack from Javier and his witch-breed students, and an escape attempt by Murdoch and Donald, but also the escape of even more tenured prisoners. A group of four who sailed on an expedition mounted by Sir Richard Reed aboard the good ship Fantastic, granted extraordinary powers sailing through a glowing curtain of light. Things truly turn against von Doom once Murdoch is able to reunite Donald with the real treasure of the Templars. Not the glowing orb, but a walking stick that transforms Donald into a mighty Norse god of thunder. Having triumphed and escaped, the united heroes, Sans Murdoch, set off for Roanoke to try and stop the anomaly and escape King James' wrath. But three other ships soon set sail for the same destination. One crewed by Enrique and his brotherhood of those who will inherit the earth, who have broken ties with the crown. One crewed by David Banner and a reluctant Peter Parqua, instructed by King James to kill Nicholas Fury. And one crewed by Virginia, Rojas, and Strange's wife, Clea who have crucial information the heroes need to prevent the end of all that is, was, and will be. Obviously the story doesn't stop there, but even if I wasn't reaching the point where I probably need to wrap this video up, I don't want to give the whole thing away. Maybe I'll finish the tale another time, but with Echo and Madame Web coming up, I don't actually know when I'd have a free week, so in case I don't get back to it, I highly recommend checking this miniseries out yourselves.